hello and thank you for the opportunity for presenting our project here in this um, in this forum. We're very excited about it and um, hope that we can bring across the importance of this um, at this particular moment in time uh, in Ireland. Um, my name is uh, Dr. Emma Reardon. I'm the Teaching and Learning Officer at the School of Languages, Linguistics and Cultures at uh, Language, Literatures and Cultures, I should get my own name right, um, at uh, UCC, where I also teach German and Applied Linguistics. So I'm project <laughs> a project leader on this. Uh, Dr. Clive Earls is representing the um, Maynooth uh, University, where he is head of German and also lecturer in German and Applied Linguistics. Uh, Dr. Anya Furlong is representing uh, WIT. She's our, uh, so these are our team leaders in the institutions. Uh, Anya is a lecturer in uh, French, uh, intercultural communication and language education. And Dr. Colin Flynn is representing Dublin City University, where he is lecturer in Irish and Applied Linguistics as well. Um, before I begin, I want to give you some background uh, to this project in order to uh, give you an understanding of the rationale behind it. This is particularly in relation to the Languages Connects document, which has um, been published recently. And this is a really significant document for language education in Ireland. It's, in fact, the first foreign language strategy that we have had. And uh, the language teaching community in Ireland is very excited about this. And we really need to respond at higher education also to this in a uh, very... Um, yeah, in a very strong way, especially to, to some particular aspects of it. And I want to draw your attention particularly to one of the stated aims of the Languages Connect document, which is a five-fold increase in the number of students learning language at higher education institutions in Ireland by 2026. And just, so it's a 500% increase. So uh, currently there are about 4% of students learning language in higher education and it should increase to 20%. And just to give you some context on this, I was thinking about UCC where I'm based and there's 20,000 students. So according to these numbers then, if we extra extrapolate from that, uh, we currently teach 800 students language and we should be increasing this to 4,000. So obviously this is a major capacity issue. Um, there are other aspects of the uh, Languages Connect document that are also very uh, important to us. The increasing number of foreign language assistants, the diversification of languages offered, um, increased up uptake in the Erasmus Plus uh, scheme, and then the integration of the Common European Framework of Reference for Languages, which is a policy document from uh, uh, the EU, and in general, then, the increased awareness of language learning and the importance of that. We also have to mention Brexit and the implications of Brexit for languages, particularly if and when uh, Britain leaves the EU, that Ireland will be the largest English-speaking country. Um, so that will have implications for trade and also for working within the EU. And languages may become much more important to our students in higher education. <clears throat> so... Capacity building is obviously a huge issue for this, and this is what we're aiming to address. But one aspect of it is, of course, structurally and in terms of resourcing, like um, facilities and things, are institutional issues. We are looking at um, language teachers and the profile of skills that language teachers need to have to be successful, efficient, effective at uh, higher education uh, institutions. There are currently no nationally recognised qualifications for foreign language teachers in higher education. So we're looking firstly to profile the language teacher skills that, uh, that uh, are needed in higher education institutions. And in doing so, then we will produce a self-evaluation tool, which you may have uh, heard about before uh, in terms of the spiky profile. So luckily, Carl gave me a, a little bit of uh, uh, a leg up in that description. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you what we want to do with this uh, as well. And um, we also want to provide then a professional development framework because we know that our language teachers in higher education are in undertaking uh, professional development, but it's very difficult to get it recognised and it's very difficult to know how this fits in with the greater scheme of um, their professional development. The deliverables on this then is this evidence-based skills profile. This is very important to us, especially as applied linguists, um, that what we produce is uh, research-based. Um, and then this self-access and freely available self-evaluation tool for teachers will be based on the skills profile that uh, is identified during the sort of research phase of the project. Again, you probably recognise this from, um, uh, from Carl's uh, presentation, uh, where you have then 
uh, the, the profile already, sorry, <laughs> sorry, where the profile already exists. Uh, I can do it here perhaps, uh, no. Uh, so where the profile already exists, so the development of this is maybe a little bit of a misnomer because the, the, the profile or the software tool at least exists. We would need to populate it with the uh, mm, skills that we have identified during the research phase of the project. So then we would populate these sorts of uh, questions for language teachers um, and they in different areas of their language teaching skills and a visual representation of their uh, skills profile will be produced for them to then think about what kind of action they need to take based on this. We will also be looking at this in terms of the digital badge type system that uh, has been uh, used in teaching and learning for the last number of years. Um, so that there is some sort of certification for teachers to be able to say, yes, I've done this and I'm moving forward with uh, areas that I feel that I was deficient in. And we will identify existing um, professional development opportunities online and otherwise. I'll, I'll give you a little indication of what, what's already, already available and sort of fit these into a framework of how um, teachers will be able to address their skills in that sense. So we are building on the SPEEDS project, which is a, the national forum funded project, which is coming to the end of its uh, funding cycle now. We are also very much taking into consideration the Digi Languages project, which is also based on the All Aboard project, uh, where there are online resources for teachers to access. So when we have the skills profile for the teachers, we can, if they have identified a deficit in a, sp in a specific skills area, we can direct them to those sorts of activities that are already existing. Um, and here you may maybe can't read those so well, but uh, we have hosted at UCC and at Maynooth um, National Forum Seminar Series, for instance, on um, the Unilang project in the UK and on uh, the new descriptors from the Common European Framework of Reference, um, where we had fantastic attendance, loads of teachers, great conversations. We want to be able to certify that sort of professional development activity that's going on. And you can see here, this is a template for the digital badge that is used at UCC and the implication there that you would also use it on your um, social media platforms to, in order to, to show what you have done. Hmm. So the work plan is, uh, yes, there's quite a lot to be done in this sense. We have a team of applied linguists, so uh, as project leader at UCC, the, the lead institution, and then the te team leaders at the other, the partner institutions. At UCC, then, we would propose to have a steering committee that would be made up of representatives from the languages, and we are very lucky also at UCC at the School of Languages to have Asian studies as well, so it would not just be the European languages, but also Chinese, Korean, Japanese. Um, that we will have a representative from those languages, a student representative um, and the head of school, uh, the learning technologists and also um, yeah, a research assistant. So that would be the steering committee which would be based at UCC then and then the team leaders would uh, uh, coordinate their colleagues at their institutions. The first uh, step for the project then would be to consult with stakeholders so that would be really very much a mixed methods research approach where we would have focus groups to talk to students to um, allow uh, to explore what they feel is important for their language teachers to have in terms of skills um, and interview then management and also of course the teachers themselves to see what they feel their skills are and what they need to develop. We will re review also existing frameworks. So we are aware of equals, for instance. We are aware of the Unilang projects. We are aware of different language teacher training uh, initiatives in Ireland, but we want to make this specific to the higher education context. Um, so that would be the first stage. And then we will have this very rigorous data collection and analysis. As I say, we all have very uh, strong evidence, uh, or sorry, uh, empirical research backgrounds. And we will produce research outputs with the intention of, uh, of presenting our research at conferences such as the Irish Association for Applied Linguistics and the European, um, the Association of University Language Communities of Britain and Ireland, and CIRCLES, which is the European version of this. Um, we'll develop the skills profile then and allow t uh, teachers to access this, to self-access this um, on a small scale in a piloting type of idea and then test and revise the profile. And this is where, and I know Carl addressed these as well, issues of the data, how we gathered the data. I mean, I know at the moment the, the, the profile tool is available on WordPress 
on the WordPress farm at UCC, so it's, it's basically owned by UCC at the moment, and this is an ongoing con uh, conversation that will be happening about how we will develop this, what we will do with the data, if we'll do anything, and what the implications of this will be. Um, and then we will identify, as I mentioned, the existing activities and be able to direct teachers who have identified uh, deficits in their skills profile to these activities. Hmm. So, uh, this is my last slide, um, but it's a very important one. Uh, it's regarding the impact and sustainability, of course. The most important thing for us is then student learning. So, firstly, to give students the opportunity, like it has been said in the Language Connect document, to access language education and higher education. So, that's a, a really important aim for us. And also that when students are accessing language provision, that they are getting the best provision that is possible. So the most effective teachers using the most up-to-date methodologies and so on. The Languages Connect impl uh, implementation is obviously a very important factor here. We are also aware of the Foreign Language Advisory Group, um, the lobbying group, One Voice for Languages, for instance, uh, National Languages Lobbying Group has mentioned that there is a dearth of higher education uh, representation on that foreign language advisory group which is related to the language connect and we would hope maybe that in doing this project we would be able to in some way um, yeah influence or um, also uh, yeah give some guidance to that advisory group very important is also then the professionalization of the field so um, we have a lot of, of staff, even currently, that are on part-time contracts who are funded outside of Ireland, who are postgraduate students, um, and to give them the opportunity maybe to progress in their career, but also that when we are recruiting teachers that we know what kind of skills they have, um, and if there is a deficit, how they can address that. And building this community of practice, is very important. So we are ac working across languages and across the country in different institutions. So we are building a community of practice. So there are already um, uh, associations for individual languages um, and we want to um, build a bridge between these um, to, to recognise that uh, foreign language education and higher education can learn from each other um, in this way. Uh, and the potential is there also for outreach to post-primary level um, and to other language educators in the country as well. Um, Evidence-based practice is very much at the core of this, so it's at the core of what we're going to produce. Um, it's also at the core of what the teachers are going to be able to do with this, so when they um, uh, are thinking about their own professional development, they will have a tool that will allow them to identify based on evidence or at least their own interpretation of the evidence um, what they need to address. Um, and it may also be uh, useful for management, for um, assessing the skills profile of a team, for understanding then what is needed within a particular department, within a particular institution, um, and how that may go forward in the future with, with recruitment. I relate this also then to future developments in, in language teacher education. So we have at all of our institutions um, the um, some sort of accredited teaching and learning um, um, activities. So be that a postgraduate certificate or modules or postgraduate masters and so on. We would envisage perhaps that in the future there would be a specific language and te teaching, language teaching and learning um, accredited um, activity. And what we're doing would be forming the basis of what could happen in those situations. So we will have uh, gathered all of the evidence, we will have uh, consulted with the, with the stakeholders and have uh, developed the skills profile so any accredited uh, work can be based on that. And I think uh, also of the seminar series, so we're hosting in UCC uh, next year a seminar series for an uh, uh, event from the National Forum on preparing students for study abroad for instance and I, I, I can see that you know we would be able to identify m more effectively what sort of seminars in language teaching and learning would be useful and then we may be also able to um, provide a digital bad sort of certification for those sorts of measures. I talk really fast. <laughs> um, I think I, I, I will end by saying that we really feel very strongly that this project is very timely, um, that it needs to happen now because we need to respond at higher education to this document and that now is the time. Um, 
the issue of capacity is really inherent to the Languages Connects document and we need to be doing something about it. Thank, Thank you. you.